<laughs> Jason, how's it going? Very good. Thank you very much. I'm flipping the. Uh, <laughs> I asked you to come on for a podcast, and you threw it back and you said, "Sure, let's do a live chat." And he said, "Why not?" Um, yeah, I wanted to turn the tables, right? <laughs> absolutely. Well, look, it's my first live live chat, so um, you're the first. Well, welcome to my realm of YouTube and Facebook and live stream. So great to see you here. <laughs> how long? Have, how long have you had the channel open? Uh, in German, I started in May 2016, so over four years now, and I've been doing, actually, um, Dingle, batch one was the reason I started my English channel, because I was doing all the reviews just in German, and no one was doing certain videos about uh, different reviews in English at all, and I said, hey, this needs to get out there, and that's when I started actually doing English also. And when when you asked for the English um, version? Well, it was about a good two and a half years ago, I think. I would have to look that up to be exact. <laughs> Are you living in Germany long? Because I know you're American. I've been in Germany now since 1988, so I've lived here longer oh. than in the States. All oh, right. What brought you to Germany? Was it a... Exchange program, met a girl, stayed. <laughs> the usual story. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Nothing special there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what prompted you to start doing um, uh, whiskey reviews? Like, who Were you looking at other YouTube videos, other YouTube lads, or... Uh, Scotch Test Dummies in the States actually were a big inspiration for me. Um, they were the number one reason I actually started going live. I was on their channel way back when, um, almost three years ago, and um, that was actually the, the start of my live series. Every Sunday night in German at 9 o'clock p.m. I go live with a guest, so I've been doing that now for almost three years. Um, what actually inspired me was I wanted to learn a little bit about whiskey. And I'd done a little bit with YouTube beforehand. So I said, hey, that's a great combination. I'm going to document my journey to become a whiskey, I don't know, expert is too much, but uh, someone who knows something about whiskey. So I said, okay, I'll do bourbons for maybe a month, and I'll go to Irish for a month and go to world whiskeys for a month. And then I'll end up in the, in the mecca of um, whiskey heaven and scotch. Well, um, basically, four years later, I'm just starting to get into the scotch. <laughs> I've really enjoyed your um, your reviews. I think you're one of the more um, enjoyable characters uh, doing your <laughs> Pretty reviews. Pretty cool sometimes as well, yes. <laughs> that's that's why I wanted to chat you because um, I was looking through your stats and I seen I actually have written down there now. So you've seven Canadian reviews on your channel. You've eight Swedish. You've twenty five German. You have sixty bourbon reviews. You've eighty plus Scotch. And then you've 160 plus Irish reviews. How, how did that happen? Well, it has a lot to do with there's very, very few um, YouTubers out there doing Irish whiskey. <laughs> and so my motto for my English channel is, if no one else has done a review on it, I'll do it first. And so I, that's my number one rule. I have to at least, um, someone else can beat me sometimes to actually publishing it, but by the time I do my video, I actually um, produce my video, I film it, I'm the first person doing it, at least I couldn't find anyone else on, on YouTube. And so I have a little bit of a, a love for Ireland as well. I've been there a few times, visited most of the distilleries, should have been there again in March to visit all those I had not seen, but of course the big evil C word happened, and so that's been postponed. How many times have you been to Ireland? How many, how many distilleries have you gotten to? Uh, I've been there basically three times to visit distilleries. The first time was Bush Mills. Um, actually, together with my mom, we were up at the Giants Causeways, and of course, you dropped by. And that was a little bit that sparked this little bit of a of a hunger to figure out more about Irish whiskey and whiskey in general. Um, the second time I was there, and um, we went. Uh, where were we? We went to all the ones basically back then in Dublin at the time. We went over to Royal Oak. We went down um, to uh, Waterford. I met Ned for the first time before they even opened. I was with Jennifer. Um, you got your private tour down Waterford. So. Yeah, exactly. Very, very. Jennifer spot, also yeah. there with yeah, Tipperary. I was at the farm back then and, and so on. And I did a different tour. Another did some up towards the north and so on. So I've visited a few. A nice about half of the 33 that are actually in um, operation at the moment. Yeah, yeah. There's a few after coming online and uh, the past few weeks, um, and I, I see there's new planning applications for others as well yeah. um, uh, coming on stream. And any of the newer ones that you're kind of uh, really, really chomping at the bit to get to have a visit? <laughs> well, I have bought some casks. Um, I have one a cask at Connacht, uh, which I would really like to go visit. I have a cask at Dublin Liberties, which I visited the Can last time. Can I ask time you about the there. casks? Actually, what what cask have you got in Connacht? 
Uh, I have to look at my documents. To be honest, it's a um, it's a bourbon cask. I'm pretty. I'm, it's only double distilled. Um, I bought it at the beginning of this year, actually. Okay. So, um, Clannacilty. I'm going to buy a cask. That's um, I didn't make it into the program either here for. Um, uh, Bowen, um, I wanted to sign up. I wrote them and said, hey, well, sorry, you're too late. It's like, really? <laughs> All 500 casks are gone. Uh, Powers Court, I have a cask as well Do there. It. And um, at least I have from Michael Morris the promise that up there at the new um, distillery in Northern Ireland that I'll be able to get one of their casks as well. So Which we'll which distillery in Northern Ireland? Is that the Rodman? Uh, or which Copeland? one is it? Which one is it? Rodman or Copeland? Is it or... Nope, a bigger name. Uh, the guy, the French, the, the guy who was the French um, uh, wine, uh, the vineyard, and then bought the, and moved up. Hinch, yep. Hinch. Yep. Oh, Hinch, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, very yeah. good. good. The, um, they have the builders in this week in Hinch. Have you seen the buildings? Oh, my God. I, 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 yes, yes, it's amazing, and they should almost be finished now, right? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I saw they posted uh, pictures um of, of empty buildings, only big high ceilings, lovely ornate glass, uh, kind of courtyard outside. Yeah. Old, it's it's on an old building. Um, it's on an old estate. Looks like maybe stables or something. Yep. Uh, exactly. Absolutely gorgeous. It's yeah, going to be a gorgeous visitor center, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're looking course. to get a cask up there as well. Yeah. I, at least I was promised um, by Michael Moore Morris, who's part of the national sales ambassador team that that would be a possibility and I'm looking forward to that. So usually I just try to go for normal, I would say Republic of Ireland and try to steer away from Northern Ireland a little bit, also due to Brexit and the uncertainties at the moment, but we'll see. Ah, uh, they're all right up the north too. We're not all, it's not all happening down south. Yeah, that's in, true, um, there's a lot going on. I mean, that Dublin wh Whiskey Week was amazing. I watched uh, Belfast, Belfast, Belfast Whiskey Week, whiskey week. yeah. Belfast Whiskey you. Week, uh, with, yeah, that was actually, um, that was nice. I really enjoyed that week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Paul did a great job there. In fairness, he did. Too. He did. Yeah. I was up with Brendan Carty there um, a few weeks ago in Cologne as well. Um, yep. You should, you should, you should definitely if you're if you're passing by. <laughs> yeah, Brendan's um, actually been on my show now twice, so I've actually yeah. interviewed him twice. Yeah, lovely fella. But um, yeah, he so, is. He is. I did not know he was an architect beforehand. It would kind of like yeah. click. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, he's always pushing the envelope. <laughs> yeah. No, his his distillery is. Um, it's amazing. It's it's yeah. it's as big as my workshop at home. It's like a little <laughs> shed, yeah. and and he brought me out to his maltings then out the back, and it's like a six foot by four foot by two foot shed yeah. with with his just you know, smoker on the bottom that you'd be um smoking meat in your back garden. Mm -hmm. and he has it in the bottom. And he's a few little racks, and he's just toasting away the grains and the oats. And um, I think he loves he loves uh, peating the oats. I think for for uh, his mash bills, which is um and it really like, I tried a peated um, non GI pot still. Okay. Um, I was yeah. there, and it had a twenty percent peated oat uh, in the mash bill, and oh my god, three months old, yeah. not hope. You, you like, it was amazing. It was just so okay. smooth. It wasn't. Um, there was not. It wasn't even new making, you know. Yeah. Um, but that that oat comp component, I think, um, seems to make a huge difference. Um, whatever he's doing, yeah, really interesting. Yeah. And they are pushing as well with other people like in Blackwater to change the technical files. So let's see if it'll happen by the time that whiskey's three years old. Don't mention the war. <laughs> Don't mention the war. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so you do bottle shares with your bottles, do you? Because yeah. I, I've seen on your website you you um, you advertise that people can buy you know ten cl or fifty cl or hundred cl. Um, uh, well, shares. Okay. And so what does that work? And how does that work? Well, um, what happens is um, in Germany, I can actually send them with the, the with the mail. So I have these little five CL bottles. Yeah. I have the ten CL bottles, and I have a WhatsApp group. Or actually, two because the WhatsApp WhatsApp is limited to two hundred fifty five people per group, and so I have two different groups. And I just have a bottle that is usually the bottle I will review. I'll do a review about that bottle. I buy it, I review it, and then um, since I do a review, a review every day in English, um, sorry, in German, about three times a week in English, um, that's a lot of bottles. <laughs> I could never drink them myself. So I actually have a, a group of people who are willing then to actually purchase either the 5CL or the 10CL from the bottle, and then I um, have a little bit like of a depot where they can store it until their little um, package is finished and filled up, and then, I, then they pay via PayPal usually, and I send it off with the uh, German postage service which works out fairly well for everyone involved 
So are you only doing the bottle shares, we'll say, in mainland Europe, or is it just Germany? Or It's where, basically where just Germany. It's a little bit difficult to send it across borders and yeah. also taxes and so on, and excise tax, and it gets a little iffy outside of Germany. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a shame. Yeah. Uh, is there any unicorn bottles you're kind of um, looking to, to uh, get on as a review? Oh, I have, I have. I just see what comes out and I just go and buy some. I mean, it's great to not have to. I mean, basically, from each and every bottle, um, I only own five CL at the end of the day. And so the other 65 CLs are other people's money that are involved. And so it's kind of easy to get a 100 euro, 200 euro bottle sometimes and not worry too much about that price. <laughs> yeah. I seen the last one you did, the, the 40 year old. Um... Okay, that was speaker, yes, from Northern North yeah, Star yeah. Spirits, NS, yeah, mm -hmm, SSS. Yeah. That was very, very nice, actually. The, the 29 year old I didn't like as much as I liked the 40 year old. And it was yeah. I, uh, fairly, it wasn't even 200 euros for the bottle, so not that bad. And you're going to do a bottle share on that as well? I have already done a bottle share. What happens is, is usually the bottle share happens right after I do the video. And it takes, right. because I do pre production videos, it takes about two weeks before the videos come out, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. And so those have actually almost been all sent out as well. I see you have, you have a lot of kind of link ups with uh, Marika Spitzer. Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, Marika Spitzer. Very good. Yes. Spitzer, yes. There we go. www.irish minus whiskies with an S dot D for Deutschland, which is Germany. Yeah, we work together a little bit. Yeah, we cooperate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she really flies the, um, the the flag of Irish whiskey in, in Germany. I, I see. Like, so. yeah. yeah. Could you tell people a bit about her? Because I'd actually like to know more about Marika myself. All right, very, very good. Marika is a very strong young lady, to say the least. And about 10 years ago, she actually was, okay, I'm going to become um, self-employed. What, what am I going to do? She was at Inter Whiskey in, in Frankfurt, and she actually went there and tried whiskey. I mean, she was captivated by this spirit, to be very honest. She went back home, and then she kind of looked around and saw that there was Horse by Whiskey.de that was selling everything. And then she kind of just loves Ireland as well and was like, okay, who's selling Irish whiskey? And it was like, no one. <laughs> I mean, there's a, the standard Jameson, and there's a, some standard Red Breast. But other than that, there's basically no one actually specializing in Irish whiskey. And so she took it upon herself to become that specialist in the German-speaking world to um, uh, be the um, number one website um, for Irish whiskey here, at least sales of um, bottles in Germany. And so she actually goes to Ireland every year, twice a year, and meets up with all these new young producers and brings their product um, sometimes even quicker to Germany than it is in America and so on, which is very, very unique. So that's one of my best sources as well for nice um, whiskey. And as you might know, um, the VAT in Germany is much lower than it is in Ireland. And what's more important is the excise tax is much, much lower. <laughs> and so we're paying 20% less for Irish whiskey in Germany than you are in Ireland, which is, yeah. I'm sorry, that's life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I am envious when I hear of uh, Americans or Germans talking about the, the, the price they just paid, you know. Something the other side of the world in, in the US, like, and it's two thirds the price. It's, it's, uh, and like, I live 10 minutes down the road from Middleton. Middleton prices is in a 750 mil bottle, and you're going, ah, come on. Um, yeah, yeah, especially when you look at the Red Breast 21, what I pay for it and what other people pay for it. It's like, yeah. wow. And then I complain because the price actually went up since last year. And it's like, okay, good. No, you have, I have it pretty good still. And Marika's website, um, what website is that again? It was www.irish-whiskies with an S, E Y S dot D E. And yeah. it's a web shop. Um, she just sells whiskey and she does seminars and so on like that. But it's just she's she... very some background information there, but it's all in German. Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's her focus group. <laughs> the German speaking world. She just has an importer now for Switzerland. He's going to start up actually in November, and I'm going to do a live stream with him as well in German in a few weeks and uh, kind of push him along as well and get that awareness out there. I see she's um, doing huge link ups as well with JJ Curry. Uh, Louise and herself seem to be kind of, you know, after clicking. Um, yeah. and I, I mean, Louise is a great person. You had Eric on your show recently. I was just listening along and it's like, oh, that Eric. Oh, I, I want him as well. I want to talk to him as well. He's great. 
I didn't have Eric on as Eric employee of JJ Curry. I had Eric on as um, Ennis Whiskey Club. I know, Eric. but still, I connected the dots once, and I was like, "But people crazy. don't know about like the second oldest whiskey club in in Ireland. Like, yeah. no, no one really. He just it's all in the down low. They've they've kept it nice little uh, um, closed circle up up in Clare, and um, yeah. they've they've all gone on up there. Yeah, they've. Yeah. I think they're right. It's since twenty twelve. I think Eric. Um, mm -hmm. Eric and his brother-in-law, his name knows escaping me at the moment, mm -hmm. um, have, have got it going on up there, like, you know? Yeah. Um, their big thing is is to go for a steak and then have four whiskeys after, you know? So, and have a chat about the whiskeys and stuff. So it's, yeah, it's was all... really an interesting concept as well. And yeah, yeah, Louise yeah. Um, is someone I know. We've met a few times at different fairs, and she's actually been to Germany, and I've um, worked with her as well there. And I was supposed to, in March, actually sleep at her home, um, that wonderful award-winning um, palace, let's call it, and um, actually interview everything that's going on there as well. But it didn't work out, so we'll have to do that next year, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, you you like the, the J.J. Curry stuff as well. I like some of it. I'm fairly critical of some other stuff, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Sometimes there's a little bit too much of young grain in the moment in there. Um, the um, Bonders blends that Marika have done, has done together with those were really nice, to be honest. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook group over here in uh, German. It's called um, Irish Whiskey, and then the German word for friends, which is Freunde. And we've actually done two um, bottlings for that through my Brilliant. Brilliant. And um, that is also very, very nice. And then those bottles somehow make it back to Ireland in the auctions and are worth up to 10 times more than what we paid for them, where yeah. we just kind of go, oh, oh. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a scramble at the moment, you know, for collectors. Um, everyone's just going crazy, trying to get the bottles before they go, you know, out of, uh, you know, out of economic sense, really, to, to, to hold on to and put into your collection, you know. Um, it is a bit crazy, but look, it's, uh, it is what it is. I think the, the Irish whiskey scene in Germany is pretty big, isn't it? That's the impression I get. Okay. Uh, <laughs> compared to the cast strength peated Isla community, it's microscopic. <laughs> Okay. So give a German a whiskey and he's going to want a cast drink Isla whiskey, uh, nice. with, I don't know, 100 ppm, and then he's happy sometimes. At least that's the feelings many of us have, um, especially you go to whiskey fairs and whiskey shows and so on. Those are the places people t tend to um, drift towards a little bit more. Now, there is um, an interest that is um, that is awakening, that is starting to happen. Uh, a lot of it is due to Marika and her, um, <laughs> her un... Um, untiring efforts to push her product and the wonderful products of Ireland there. And a lot's going on. I mean, all these new distilleries are coming online, first of all, often with their gins that she also has in her, um, sort of, um, in her um, portfolio. And then as well, when the whiskey finally gets there and is, is old enough to be sold. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't seen many other European countries with, we'll say, Irish whiskey releases. Like yeah. in Germany, you, you have a lot of um, coolie bottlings, a lot of, there's a Hotel yeah. Hof, and um, there, there's a, yeah, there's, there's a fairly big scene there compared to, we'll say, the rest of Europe, I, I feel, anyway. Well, the um, the Hotel Essener Hof is what it's actually called. Um, that was due to basically one man, that was Tilo. He owns a um, whiskey and spirits store called um, um, Kaspa, Rolf Kaspa, and he is now, I think it's the 17th edition now, his 17th single cask um, bottle and he's put out. Um, the last one was actually a 16-year-old port cask the okay. entire time, and he actually has connections to the Teeling family. And um, it's getting harder and harder for him to get these excellent barrels for any price, um, yeah. and so they become a little bit more, less um, often, but great stuff, great stuff, yeah. Yeah. You were saying a while ago about your casks. Um, are you only investing in Irish casks? Are you uh, spreading your wings? I'm at the moment. Uh, there's enough mm. people doing scotch, uh, scotch. So I'm actually, when, I, when there's a scotch um, barrel share is what we call it over here, or cask share, I will take a, uh, uh, usually it's, we divide it virtually up into 30 parts. And so I'll have a little, a 30th, I'll do a share of theirs and I will not buy the cask myself. I'll just have a share. Um, but I think that's, um, there's not enough people, at least in my German world that I'm in, my whiskey world, that are doing Irish cash shares or even German cask shares. And so I have that little niche for myself at the moment more and more. I'm glad you mentioned German whiskey because I've seen, what was it, 25 reviews you've done in German of German whiskeys. I've never even seen a German whiskey. What um, What is hot? How many distilleries are in Germany? What's hot in Germany with 
whiskey? What are the brand, what are the names we should be looking out for? Uh, well, officially, there's over 400 different distilleries here. <laughs> um, but the problem is these are schnapps distilleries that now produce a barrel of whiskey a year. And right. so, um, basically, we have about a good 35, 40 real distilleries that are putting out at least a barrel a week and so on and doing whiskey on a, on a more um, a massive scale, let's say that. Um, the biggest problem that we have in Germany is usually the market is in Germany large enough that we don't have to, um, the, it's, it's not even saturated yet so that there's, there's more demand than there's supply and so that we don't even try to um, supply the export markets. Um, one thing that will happen in the future is stork. Stork Rye Whiskey 2018, they won the best rye of the world. Um, oh. you'll, be, you'll be, and then, then of course, all their stock was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's a good price, though. Success, yeah. Um, you know, the curse of success as well. And so now they basically have caught up more or less, and they have a good, um, they have a foolproof, which is 55% ABV um, rye, and they're just focusing just on rye, and they're very, very much into the um, mixology and the bartender scene and so on. And so that's something you can look out for, and they are going to export. And the second thing which will happen in the near future is something called St. Killian's. Okay. Um, they actually have foresight cat. They have a foresight spot stills, two of them, and they're producing up to um, almost five hundred thousand liters um, a year. Is the goal in the next year to get up to that, and they will be actually exporting sometime soon. Yeah. So, have you many uh, kind of boutique artisan distilleries? Um, we'll say Cologne esque. Any small yeah. little uh, distilleries pumping out any any good whiskey in Germany? Um, well, yes, yes, yes. Now, that's always a question of is it just whiskey or is it also all these other types of schnapps and liqueurs and so on and gins and rums and whatever else they're doing. Um, there's a thing, it used to be called Glen Els. They lost the fight with the SWA. It's now called Ellsburn. And that is a very, very nice distillery and the Hearts Mountains in the center of um, Germany. And they're putting out some fabulous whiskeys. Even the people in Germany go, I'd rather sometimes have something from them than from another place. Um, there's another place called Nine Springs. It's actually on the border between East and Western Germany, close, close to the Magdeburg and Fulda. And um, they're also putting out some very, very amazing stuff. They were beer um, brewers, and now they also also have a distillery um, as well. So good stuff there. Have you visited many of the German distilleries? Yes. <laughs> so like in Ireland, we have, we'll say, the technical foil, and in Scotland, and, and it defines how and what, what um, machinery you can use and, and you know it has to be pot stick copper pot stills and all that you're saying there's a lot of the making schnapps and, and liqueurs and stuff yep. um, they use a different still we'll say than a, a pot belly copper mm -hmm. pot still for schnapps traditionally is there a technical foil is there is there anything in germany legislating what is german whiskey and what isn't or are they just saying well we've made it in this here and this is the whiskey do you uh, have the same problems in germany not really, uh, because we don't have a technical file, actually. Um, we do belong to the European Union, and therefore the European Union has some requirements for a uh, single malt, three years, and 100% um, malted barley and so on. But we do not need to use just oak. We can use chestnut. We can use any other type of barrel we want. The one distillery I just mentioned, which was St. Kilian, the master distiller there, his name is Mario Rudolph, and he loves experimenting. He actually has over 800 different types of casks. Now, those are different sizes. Those are different types of wood. There's different types of um, things that were in there be beforehand. And so this guy is absolutely experimenting. And it's just like, how do you <laughs> even make something that's going to be a standard for the future? I mean, how do you not lose track of what's going on? He says, I love excellence. All right, good. I understand that. All right. And so that's very, very good. Um, yeah. So we're not really um, people. There is a, um, a German whiskey association that has just been founded. I think it's like five years old, to be honest. It might be eight. Um, I work together actually with the president. Um, her name is Michael Habel. She has a distillery as well, which is in the eighth generation, which will have a lot in Germany. You have someone who actually started not as a whiskey distiller, but actually, as I said, uh, many, many generations beforehand, they were making different types of alcoholic beverages. And then they've asked, also added now the whiskey as one of their products to that. And she belongs um, 
to that um, associ association of German whiskey makers. And so they are actually um, trying to figure out what German whiskey is and should yeah. be. And so they're, basically they're at that stage now where there might be in the next five years that technical file to actually say, hey, um, what's going on here? But at the moment, it um, has to be German whiskey made in Germany, according to, in order to become a member of that group. And some people have um, said, okay, sorry. <laughs> we can't, we may have um, sourced our whiskey from someplace else and put a label on it. Um, we know that from Ireland as well, they, <laughs> that people do not make them themselves. We do have the unique um, information that you do not have to actually do the, uh, the fermentation yourself. You can actually let a different brewer make the wort and then you distill the wort. So that's allowed. It's just the distillation process has to happen at your place, wherever that place is. And are some of those distilleries using, we'll say, the same stills um, that you've seen anyway, um, as that they're using to make the schnapps or to make course, the cures? Yes. So we oh. have the same things. Um, we have um, at St. Kilian, they're the only ones that actually have four sites. In Germany, everyone else is using Cote or also then Holstein. Um, some people have used some um, Italy, also the stills down there. Um, so as a lot of them are actually using with a rectifier with a little um, column still at yeah. the end and often they just open the plate so it just flows through there. Um, and that's that's okay. I mean, they have to learn how to do it and uh, the process of distilling is important but getting good wood as well is also sometimes just as if it, even not more important. Yeah, I was, I was in Pierce Lines distillery recently. You've, you've been in Pierce Lines, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes, yes. They'll drone. Yes, they, yes. Brought, they brought them over from Kentucky, didn't they? Yes, um, but they have that five or six plate rectifier yep. on top of the, the still. So they're using similar style stills in, in Germany, you're saying, as that is. Yes, it? very, very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm, interesting. There's, yeah. um, I, love, I love hearing about experimentation going on, you know, and just pushing the boundaries and seeing what can be done and what mm -hmm. can't be done, what works, what doesn't work. And there's a there's a lad in Ireland. His name escapes me, but um, he was selling his whiskey under the Kinnahan's brand, um, oh. and he was calling it the Cask Project. Uh, yes, Kate I actually Davis. have the hybrid cask as well. That's yes. a very unique thing. Yes. Yeah, very very I unusual. That in you know? English, uh, I was the first one who did that, even before to Ireland. It was in Germany. Yeah, um, I, I like that kind of uh, messing around and, and seeing if it works, and just mm -hmm. you know, is it too complicated? Is it does like you know does it complement each other? Yeah. Um, it's very interesting uh, to see all that. Have you done any kind of uh, whiskey training, whiskey courses, anything like that? We have some uh, some online courses. You have the Scotch Whiskey Association, you have the Ac Academy in Edinburgh, and things like that. But a lot of it is basically just learning by doing. So yeah. I'm going to work together a little bit with a distillery here close to my new home, and um, I'm going to follow good. them along for a couple of days and just kind of go through that process and learn how. Um, how different things happen and why and what effect it has. But um, that's something I'm really, really keen on doing, yeah, is mm -hmm. to increase that knowledge. I need to work on my sensoric as well, um, sensory um, a type of training. I need to do more of that. And probably there'll be maybe with other um, spirits involved as well. You did that course, didn't you? That first, was it? Yeah, the WSET. Sorry, uh, the WSET level two yeah. spirits, yeah, with Nick yeah. Ryan in, in Ireland, he's, um, He's got Thoman Gate whiskey um, uh, coming soon. Um, he's, he, I think he, he, he's done one release of the first, the initial uh, was at hundred or so bottles. Um, but yeah, Thoman Gate he's bringing Limer he's bringing a uh, whiskey back to Limerick in Ireland. Um, but but he's a WSET level three trainer, mm -hmm. so he can run the level two course. Really, really well worked doing, you know, and, and you can do it online and you know. Yeah. Your podcast for that was excellent, by the way. I listened oh, to thanks. that just the other day. I bluff it very well. <laughs> 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 uh, I actually started the. Um, I've started a new course as well. I started the um, uh, certificate in distilling with the IBD. Have okay. You looked at that, no. I've looked at it, but I have not committed yet. No. <laughs> it's heavy going. Yeah, it's heavy <laughs> going. Uh, but it's fun. Do you know, it's it's you know when you kind of have a grow or have a love for something. Um, uh, it, it's not really working <laughs> really. You know, but it, it's heavy going. Um, uh, I didn't do biology in school, so you're kind of starting from scratch, really. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. chemistry. chemistry as well, a there. Yeah. A hundred percent, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite Irish whiskey you've reviewed? Red Breast 21. It's, ah, my, it's my Christmas whiskey. Every year I did bring it out, and it's just like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> yeah. I presume you've been to the Middleton Distillery, distillery have you? No, I haven't. That was on my oh, list to do, to actually, it. in March. I was going to do that four-hour four course at Intensive in the laboratory and everything, and 
oh well yeah. we'll have to reschedule that <laughs> No, that's it's a really, really good um, uh, tour there. You get to go around the old distillery. Um, the pre was in 76, the new Middleton was made. Mm -hmm. um, so you really get to see kind of behind the behind the curtain there. Yeah. Um, and then they've got the new micro distillery going on as well with all the method yeah, and madness yeah, stills. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Micro distillery, it's <laughs> larger. Than, it's fourth largest in Ireland. <laughs> moment, it's right? impressive, you know, it's really, really good, like, you know. Uh, yeah. Micro compared, we'll say, to, to, to the new uh, plant, but um, yeah, yeah it's, it's really exciting stuff going on there, you know. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the pot stills, I mean, if you go to Glen Farkless, those pot stills are big, but Middleton's actually bigger. <laughs> I mean, those <laughs> pot stills are just massive, yeah. especially compared to anything else. And I thought it was very interesting that they changed the technical file way back when because it was the minimum, I think, wasn't it? Like 5,000 liters was the smallest pot still you could have until they changed the file. Yeah. And that actually opened the path for craft distillers to happen right. because it's going to put a 5,000 or 4,000 liters still in a farm. I mean, come on. <laughs> Um, on the tour down to Middleton, you, you'll go and you'll go into the, the, the largest pot still. I, 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 is it ever made or in existence? Yeah, the world or whatever. Yeah. It's giant. It's absolutely like it's got its own building, you know, this kind of circular. It's, it's amazing, you know, just to see yeah. the, the, the scale of it. It's, it's not in use anymore, but um, amazing to see. Like, you know, you, you'll enjoy your time. And I hope, I hope. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I will. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, there's, a, there's a good few distilleries um, in Cork as well around us. You've got Clannacilty. Yep. Um, to go West Cork, I don't think really have to do a visitor center, but... Um, I have in contact with some people down there. I actually yeah. had an appointment set up as well, but cancelled. <laughs> yeah, same, same as myself. I'm um, chomp, chomping at the bit to get the West Cork distillers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they're the doing very innovative stuff there. I mean, that's... Uh, and they're putting on a lot of juice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they are, and they've recently opened up a new distillery in um, in the town of Skibbereen. They had they they were in one place and they've moved just down the road. Um, new old, brand new, state of the art um, uh, distillery. So uh, they're expanding, and it's really exciting for for Cork whiskey, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is exciting time for for Irish whiskey there. Very, very nice. Yes. Yeah. So, of course, Dingle is not that far away from there as well, and so. I know it's not around the Dingle corner. John. It's the same corner of the country, okay? It's well, well worth well worth the trip. It's just it's it's yeah. not close. Um, those those country back roads uh, will slow you down a bit, you know. Yeah, okay, um, good two hours at least, huh? <laughs> no, Graham Cool um, is is doing uh, great stuff. You know, uh, carrying the torch there, car carrying on the torch in, in in the relay race that is Dingle, you know. Um, yeah, last year I was at the Dublin um, Whiskey Live and I interviewed him. He was basically brand new. It's like, it's like right, hello, what do you have to learn? He says, uh, pot still whiskey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite statement from him. I think I need to learn something about pot still. <laughs> I have a little story for you about Whiskey Live. I was standing behind you in the queue. Really? I, I, okay. You were on 30 or 40 back from the door. Yeah, I was around 32. <laughs> oh, okay, very yeah, good. Yeah, I was standing, standing right behind you. From the, <laughs> from the place. But I was right? kind of talking here and talking there, and I was going to say, how's it going, Jason, you know, and, and say hello, but um, I never did. But yeah, right. I, I was actually standing around two or three foot away from you. Um, ah, very, very so good. We're not, we're not strangers. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you knew who I was. I mean, I had my big tripod and the camera and the light and my shirt and so on. And so, all right. Yeah. Very, very yeah, good. You still got like a sore thumb, right? I do. I do. <laughs> but it actually makes it a little bit, little bit easier to go in there and actually interview the people and just say, hey, I'm Whiskey Jason. Yeah. Boom. And then with the microphone and just do that because that's how yeah. I learned the most as well. How did you enjoy Whiskey Life in Dublin? Um, I enjoyed it. Yes, I didn't enjoy the fact that I can only do one session. And um, also as a person from the press, let's say that um, now they know who I am. And now I probably could do two sessions. But the first time I was like, no, nah, we don't know who you are. Just just do the normal thing. And so that worked out. But it was a great it, I think it's a wonderful collection of the entire uh, brains of the Irish whiskey industry and to get everyone together in one room and just have that little bit of interaction and be able to visit them um, and talk to them and interview them and pick their brains and have the stuff under the table and say, Shh, next week it might come out and so on. That is fabulous. Um, just, just that's Isn't amazing. It? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got a sneaky a sneaky preview right of the uh, Red Breast 27. <laughs> I didn't know it at the time. There was no name in it. It was just try to see what you think. 
Um, I know not as the 27th, you know. Um, so the, there's oh, little, little gems to be had at mm, every table. Magic. No, there's, there's definitely little gems to be had at every table, you know. Um, yep. I really enjoyed it uh, last year. I, I thought um, the, the vendors put on a really good um, uh, showing of themselves. And it's great because we are... We're so small that it can, it can all be in, 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 in such a small place, you know? Well, it's supposed all to move to a bigger way. place this year, wasn't it? Yes, it's moving to the convention center down the Keys in Dublin. Um, well, it's canceled this year. I know, that was supposed <laughs> to, next year. yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see what yeah. happens next year. Mm -hmm. I know. It's so. a shame um, all, all these events have to close down and, and e even all these tastings are going online as well. But look... I mean, everyone's just putting their best foot forward and um, they're still enjoyable. I mean, you're still getting 40 to 60, we'll say, in a Zoom call or, you know, it's 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 still fun. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, yeah, over here in Germany, uh, both, basically all our fairs were cancelled as well. Um, we did have two, actually, in the last month, in um, the last three weeks in Berlin. Berlin had a little bit of a different situation and they were both outside. And so there was an outside type of um, whiskey fair that was planned anyways, and so that went ahead. On the one day, it did rain, and so it was a little bit um, not great attendance, but the other one was um, much better weather, and it was great. Yeah, but it was a limit of 500 people that were allowed in at one time, and that was it. So, Did you go to it in Berlin, did you? Too far away. I didn't do it this year. I'm sorry. Right. What are the whiskey festivals like in Germany? Are they very well attended? Are they kind of still growing? Um, yes and yes. Um, Limburg is maybe the most famous and the biggest. Um, Inter Whiskey in Frankfurt is also very, very well known around the world. We have people that come from all over the world to such um, whiskey fairs. And of course, we have smaller whiskey fairs in different places as well. And there was actually a time last year where there was hardly a weekend where there was not a whiskey fair someplace in Germany. And it was just oh, I'm almost growing too fast and too much. It's like, uh, especially for the people behind the stands and the booths, they were just like, I can go to 30 different fairs a year and it's just oh, too much um, and they're usually they're very 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 um, well attended and the biggest difference we have between for example whiskey life is you pay maybe five to eight euros to get in and you pay per dram and so you don't have a whole oh, drink as much as you can as fast <laughs> as you can but rather you have to actually go to each and every place and you um, put down your money and um, some people use tokens by the tokens from the exhibitor and then you give the token to the people behind the booth but um, usually you just give them the money and then you get your drams and Monika Spitzer for example is at a lot of different fairs in Germany and she's there holding up that Irish flag and um, saying a lot of Irish whiskey. Very good. I go to Germany at least once a year. Um, I, have a, I have a young fella, he's 12, and since he's around eight, I've been darting forward and back to Europe um, doing all the, the theme parks, all the, the roller coaster ah, parks. Ah, in Germany, before it gets to Rose. Um, where else have you been? Oh, you know, all over the place. I can't even remember half of them. In Germany? Uh, Which place have you gone? Oh, I can't remember now. I was, okay. uh, I was all over the place. Um, but... Do you have any tips of what would be a good, um, well, the best whiskey destination in Germany? Um, if people are going to make the jaunt across, um, where would you recommend is good to go for, for a good whiskey scene? Is there any particular city or town or is there anywhere kind of that stands out? At the moment, of course, it's difficult. <laughs> Let's say that. Um, Berlin does have a few nice whiskey bars as well. Um, they have a good couple good shops, um, and we have a couple nice fairs there once a year. In May, there's always a little bit of an exotic type of old whiskeys. Um, I would actually go rather towards a whiskey fair. Um, um, okay. That would be, for example, Limburg specializes in the old. You'll have a whole um, room filled with people that have antique old um, whiskeys, and you can find them no place else in the world. You're going to pay some money, but hey, they cost a lot of money. These are um, four-digit bottles sometimes, and you can do that. If you want to have more of a, um, a whiskey that a whiskey fair that shows the brightest and the best, the best and the newest, that'd probably be Inter Whiskey in Frankfurt. That's also around November. Um, that is also very, very nice. So another big fair would maybe also be the Hansa Spirit. That is in Hamburg, and that's around February. And um, Hamburg's a great city as well with some good um, whiskey um, shops as well as some nice bars. 
I think I've uh, I, I think I've noticed a few roller coaster parks as well around those areas. So um, you're right, you're right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think I'll have to go to go, go to the parks very soon, uh, maybe mm -hmm. November. <laughs> okay, good, good. Yeah. Um, I've noticed the way that you taste whiskey. So you you take it into your mouth, you swirl it round, and you you kind of uh, wash it round for five or ten seconds. Where did that come from? How did you develop that? Um, is, is that unconscious or is that something, I it's something I just learned? Yeah. I've, I've developed myself. At the moment, I'm also um, diluting the whiskey down to about 20, 25% once as well to see what's behind that. Oh, right. And then I'll go back to the normal um, cast strength or um, bottle strength that's there. I also like to, I explain it as such when I'm learning a foreign language, I've been Italian for a couple of years, um, they speak extremely quickly. And there's usually the little button that say slow. <laughs> and so you can listen to each and every syllable. And when I put water in the whiskey and I dilute it down to 25%, I get to actually um, slow down those notes that I have of the whiskey. And then when I go up to the normal speed again, it's like, oh, okay, I got that, that, and that, that I didn't get the first time. So that's very, very nice. And I always review one. I give a, um, I, I review um, a score. I'm a teacher. I teach English as a second language over here for foreign students. And so I give it a grade, A, B, C, D, F, Oh, and also I give it a value for money because sometimes you have a great whiskey at a terrible price <laughs> or sometimes you have an okay whiskey at a great price, which, of course, would be more of a suggestion. So I always divide it up into those two factors. No, the reason I ask is I've I kind of um, I've taken an interest of late of how people drink and how people knows their whiskey. Yeah. You know, I think it's fairly important, you know, um, uh, I, I'm always trying to maybe suggest to people when they're smelling, we say, don't, don't, because if we say, oh, try that, you know, they come up and they blast their, their nose yeah. out of it, you know, and, yeah. Yeah, do you know, and say, no, no, just, just open your mouth, breathe into your mouth and hold it to your nose, you know, yeah. um, but the reason I kind of started um, noticing these things was we've, uh, we have a great person in Ireland, we have a, a hidden gem in Fanon O'Connor. Um, okay. Fanon is um, doing a doctorate in um, historic mash bills. I think he's the only doctoral candidate in whiskey in Ireland, um, but he's an absolute uh, fountain of knowledge. Uh, does consultations with distilleries. Um, he's involved in the cask program with the Irish Whiskey Society. Uh, I did a podcast with Fanon, loved it. I really enjoyed my time talking to him, you know? Um, and, and anytime I, I do get an opportunity, I will listen to him. But, Fanon, <laughs> when Fanon is kind of um, standing up, and it's a bit of theatre, you know, but he, he'll actually put the whiskey in his mouth and, and he'll actually gargle it and speak oh, oh. <laughs> as he's, you know, just, and, and, and I know he does, I know it's maybe a bit of theatre or whatever, but I, I do feel he's, what he's trying to do is just get it into every single facet of, of his mouth, you know, and aerate it. And, and, um, and I found myself as well lately that when I'm drinking whiskey, I will actually take it and I'll actually. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound great, but I'll actually, I roll it down my tongue into my mouth. Mm -hmm. So I'll actually kind of, kind of stick my tongue out and just actually let it go down my tongue. And I feel like I, 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 I get that initial um, uh, feeling of viscosity, how thick it is, you know, and just that intensity first before it goes around and gets diluted in my mouth, you know. Um, wow. That's why I ask, because I think it's, it's, um, it's strange how the habits people have, you know, and how they've adapted and unconsciously just to get the most out of the spirit, you know? Well, maybe Horst was a little bit of a unconscious inspiration as well with his switching. Yeah, he always, he switches right. around from whiskey.com, right? Yeah, yeah. No, because I, I've tried your method as well, you know, I, I kind of, some goes, oh, I'll try that now. And, you know, sometimes with a younger whiskey, you're just blowing your, your senses out, I, I, I feel, you know. Um, but yeah, with an older whiskey, just to get the most out of it, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. I enjoy watching how people do it, you know, how, how that's, how, you know, at which, which level they're at and how, how they've developed their kind of, their, their style of, of taking whiskey, you know, of trying spirits. And I, and I really think it's sometimes amazing when I taste a whiskey and I review it and I watch a review of someone else and it's like, you missed that point and that yeah. point. And it's like, wait a second, they talked about that. And I come back and was, oh yeah, it really is there. And it's just really interesting how blind I am in some points. And then other points I'm hypersensitive. And it's like, didn't you get that? It's like, no. And then, oh, a little bit. I was like, no, it's so extreme. <laughs> I'm always so envious of people with really advanced palates. Um, it's something I'm trying to develop myself. And I'm even at home, you know, <laughs> when the wife is out smelling the, the herbs and, you know, because she think I'm off my game otherwise. But um, everything, and you're just everything, yeah. Yeah, just trying to get the taste and the smell of everything and just, just build up my, and I've actually started 
to um <laughs> i've got like a toolbox at home and i keep little samples excellent tiny little samples here tiny I, little I've little. different samples i just keep a little small bit of everything everything so i can always go back to it i can always maybe not taste all but, but at least knows it you know um and, and just just try and try and develop and, and and try and kind of you know build up that knowledge um uh which is and, and I, I think the way you are exposing yourself to so many whiskeys as well through the reviews you know um so I, I, get, I get a lot from reviews in german so i've tasted probably over two thousand whiskeys in the last four and a half years now um you do develop a certain yeah. Uh, yeah, let's just say ability Experience. to go, oh, yes, I like, no, I don't, and why, and so on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is there, um, I know I've asked you this, but, like, apart from Redbreast 21, is there any side curveball Irish whiskey that uh, you really, really want to go back to? Is there anything that is stuck out and go, geez, that's so unusual, you know? Uh, for me, it's a Glendalough 13 with an hour cask. Um, oh, yeah. I, I really so enjoy that. Yeah. Love that as well. That yeah. was the sandalwood. That was really, really nice. So of not course. the next edition that's much more expensive with the wooden box and so on, the old one. Yeah. So that, yeah. I actually have another bottle of that stuck away here because that's so good. I um, have as well. What would be something I really enjoyed here? I'm going to look at my list here real quick if I want, if I may. Um, at the moment, I have Fur Connell, um, the 18 year old. Yeah. This is something that I really liked. Um, uh, we talked about food, JJ that's Cole. original coolie juice as well. It is, well, no, no, Sweeney made it, so exactly. um, that's very, very nice. Um, uh, Napo Castle 16 year old twin wood was also something I really enjoyed. Um, what can else can we talk about here? Um, Powers, of course, um, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. So, um, a friend of yeah. mine, um, Ian Garrett, um. Mm -hmm is releasing a cast strength uh, powers. Uh, mm -hmm. It was supposed to be uh, tomorrow night, but due to COVID, obviously we had the, 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 um, the, the launch was, was canceled. Um, but that's really exciting that I'm gonna get to try a cast strength powers. I know there was a cast strength John's Lane uh, floating about uh, Belfast Whiskey mm -hmm. Week. Okay, but yeah. This is a full bottle of cast strength uh, all to myself. Well, maybe I might do a bottle share, but um, all to myself. So there's there's some really exciting Irish stuff coming down the line. Yeah. So the um, the Irishman uh, every year I try to get the um, the cast strength. I always call it a coffin. Uh, <laughs> that little piano case there. Yeah. So you have that. Very good. Yep. My mind is at the moment empty. Very good. Yeah. Um, as well as the right of tears. I've done basically for the last I think six years. Every one I've done. Um, and there's also from the Whistler a seven year old cast strength. Yep. Got it. Yeah. The blend of thirteen there. Um, so also, I think like the Whistler, the seven-year-old cast strength, I really liked. That was a that was a special mm -hmm. bottle. I really liked that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that seems to be a consensus everywhere. Everyone's really, really high on that um, seven-year-old cast strength from um, from the Whistler. Bowen or yeah, uh, Bowen are, are, are one of the exciting distil distilleries. Yeah. Um, that so, be really so. Excellent. Listen, Jason, thanks very much. Uh, I really appreciate you um, coming on the podcast and throwing it back at me and saying, come on, Sherrick, do a live chat. I like that curveball. Oh, I was looking for the angle. That was great. Great. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. And what thanks. would be your special whiskey? That you, what other, Which other one would you recommend except for the Glendalough? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. Hmm. Put me on the spot, so it's only fair. <laughs> hmm. The... I'm really impressed with the um, Clonakilty 15 year old um, single grain Bordeaux cask. Ooh, um, yeah. That's a real sleeper single grain. It's, you know, it's, 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 okay, good. It, yeah, it's a distillery exclusive, but you can buy it um, on the, their website. Yeah. Um, that's worth picking up, definitely. Um, Pierce Lyons are releasing some really nice stuff at the moment. Um, okay. We did a tasting. Uh, Connor Ryan is actually in the society, Cork Whiskey Society with us, and he's the um, the the I think he's the global ambassador. Connor is with, with Pierce Lines, but um, he did a tasting with us recently, and I was actually really impressed with with their stuff. You know, okay. um, yeah, I know there's a, there's a lot of exciting stuff. Just too yeah, much. A lot of going, a lot of things going on there. Very yeah, much. So. All right, Jason. Listen, uh, keep up the good oh, work. Okay. Uh, keep the reviews coming. Really oh, enjoying well. them. Um, I wouldn't mind if you did one or one, one or two more a week and kept us all entertained. And I'm sure you wouldn't enjoy doing it either. 
Well, all right. Good job. Thank you very much for having me. Jason, thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Uh, thank you.